I guess I'll get started, um, since I have like the most slides I've seen today. 60. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so, uh, welcome to basic design principles, the things your mama should have told you. Um, <laughs> I'm, all, I'm very glad you came, because uh, I don't know if anyone, anyone would come because of my title, um, but there's a point to it. Uh, so a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Aaron Paxson. I'm actually a senior here at UC Irvine. Um, I'm an informatics major with a specialization in software engineering. And for the past nine months of my life, I've been a developer at KOL. Um, so although it's only been nine months, at a company like KOL, I've been around the block more than a few times. Um, I mean, just this week, I finished the website in three days because the client was totally killing me. Um, so why the title? Um, I picked this title because uh, of my mom. Uh, there are things she's, she's uh, told me that just kind of stick. And, you know, although I go and do my own thing, um, I always remember to wear clean underwear, um, wash behind the ears and things like that. And in the same way, it's it's kind of like design. Um, there are general guidelines and rules that you should follow, but um, for the most part, you kind of do your own thing. Um, but you never forget those rules. They're always kind of in the back of your mind somewhere. And um, it, it's more like a foundation. So, And also pick the title because it's very it's provocative. And I'm hoping it's part of the reason why you showed up. Uh, so, what makes a design good? Uh, it's very difficult to, to define good. It's almost impossible, I think. Um, but most people agree that a design makes things apparent. Um, also, just as a side note, uh, this might not relate directly to Drupal, so um, if you're expecting me to code, uh, no. <laughs> Um, so, a design should make things apparent. Um, when you look at when you look at a web page, uh, I'm using a website as an example. It should be apparent as to the function of the page and what actions you're allowed to perform. Um, but the difficult part is that you have no control over users. Um, I mean, you really—they're not puppets. You can't pull on their strings and make them do what you want. And there's actually an equation for that, uh, Lewin's equation, that states uh, behavior is a function of the user and the environment. So um, all you can really control is the environment. So that's what we'll be focusing on. So the first lesson uh, that comes to mind when I think of my mom is to learn from my mistakes. Uh, not just my mistakes, everyone's mistakes. Um, so let's take a look at a web page. It's great. That's good design. Uh, for 1995. Um, so this is actually a web page uh, I took a screenshot of two days ago. Uh, I don't know what it's for. <laughs> um, so it, already you can see it's, it's not very apparent. There's lots of colors and it's very distracting and you go on for days about this. Um, but there's also other bad websites that are deceivingly bad, like this. Um, this is Sony's website for uh, some headphones. And at first glance, it doesn't look entirely bad, but if you take a look at the bottom, um, you'll see what I like to call devil CSS. It's uh, the hex code 666, which is gray, light gray. And it's, also, it's on top of a, a light gray background. So, and, it, and it's tiny. So for many users, I mean, it's, it's really Sony's way of sneaking in garbage um, and hoping you'll overlook it, which might be good in some cases. And then there's the confusingly bad. This is uh, the interface for Ford's MyTouch in their 2010 uh, Ford Edge. And um, when they were evalu evaluated in 2011, they were uh, number seven in the automotive industry. And after this car, they dropped down to number 17. So, 
Interfaces make a difference. Um, I, don't, I don't know what to do with this. Uh, so one thing my mom didn't encourage, but I figured out on my own, was to imitate or steal. Uh, so that's just learning from the good. Uh, you learn from other people's mistakes, but you also learn from other people's accomplishments. Um, and just as a side note, uh, K-Wall actually uh, borrowed an idea from Sony's website just the other day uh, in their navigation menu. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid to take from other places. Uh, so this is a, a diagram I stole. Uh, it's just, you know, different ways to log in. Um, the whole array. Uh, there's a hand scanner that we use at the gym in the upper right corner. Um, the Android unlock. So just uh, gather as many as you can, as many ideas as you can, and just pick the best one that works for your situation. Um, lesson two, use your head. Uh, my mom never liked it when I made her think for me. So she'd always tell me to think for myself. And um, when it comes to design, there's a science for that. It's called human-computer interac interaction. And it's basically the study of how humans interact with technology. Um, so anything, I mean, uh, at the, in the department of, uh, here on campus, uh, we study from anything from mobile phones to baby monitors and cribs, so it's a pretty uh, wide field, and we have a great department here for that. I was asked to put that in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what makes it so hard? Uh, everyone's different. Uh, these are just a list of, you know, everyone has different tasks, uh, different uh, cognitive abilities, different personalities, uh, different cultures, they come, everyone comes from different backgrounds, so uh, it gets tricky there. Uh, everyone has physical disabilities and limitations, and there's always the touchy subject of age. Um, that seems to be the biggest problem for many people. Um, so why should you care about any of this? Why does design matter? Why can't, if it's, a, if it's an enterprise application, why can't I just throw in some spreadsheets on a page and call it a day? Because uh, it causes users to take more time, which causes them to make more errors, which causes uh, your product to play with their emotions, whether it be frustration or anger, uh, which results in them not using it. So you don't want that if you're spending your time on it. Uh, be consistent. Uh, I don't have a, a good story to share. Oh, I don't have a story that's appropriate to share for this <laughs> <laughs> with my mom. Um, so here's me in 2008 trying to book a flight uh, from May 10th to May. Uh, sorry, March 10th to March 15th. So on this side of the screen, um, see that March is on the right hand side of the calendar pane. But when I try to book my return flight, March shifts over to the left side, and I end up clicking April 15. And I don't want to be gone for that long. <laughs> so, be consistent. Um, here's another interesting thing. It's, it's uh, a form from a custom t-shirt manufacturer, or tailor. Um, these radio buttons right here are actually links to different pages. Um, and these things that look like buttons are just titles. <laughs> so you definitely want to uh, look into what types of things afford what types of actions. So a, a good example would be Google, where you visit their web page and all you see is a text box with two buttons and a logo, and you immediately know what to expect. Um, everything here on the top and on the side pretty much stays the same, and all that changes is uh, right there in the content. So it's very predictable for, for users. And this is the biggest lesson um, that my mom taught me. Uh, I don't understand. She doesn't understand a lot of things. Uh, so she always say, help me understand, Aaron. I don't understand what you're trying to tell me. So I use metaphors. It's the best way. Um, so. She understands A, B is like A, uh, and I'll have to introduce B to her. And so 
Therefore, she under understands B. Um, here are a few bad metaphors. Uh, to the right uh, is an iPhone newsstand for TechCrunch. And just in general, it looks really bad. These are supposed to be newspapers sitting on a stand. I wouldn't suggest using that. <laughs> and this is the one more interesting. This is a, actually a metaphor for, a, for voicemail. So the idea is, when you get a voicemail, it comes through a hole and it sits in a queue. When you're ready to read the voicemail, you pick one up um, from the queue and you put it down there and it plays a message. But the reason why this doesn't work is because you can pick up any ball and put it there. And that's typically not how they work. And what happens if you take a ball and put it in your pocket and walk away? So, it's not a direct metaphor for a voicemail machine. Um, this is another metaphor, the desktop metaphor. Um, it's pretty good, but uh, my desk at home doesn't look like that. <laughs> Here's mine. Um, so, yeah, no one really does all their work with files scattered across the table. Um, and this is another one, just uh, the keyboard metaphor where um, it's standard QWERTY keyboard. And people try to relate this back to the typewriter metaphor. Um, but the problem with that is when you delete, uh, I don't, I'm not old enough to know how you delete things on a, from a typewriter, <laughs> but I hear it's complicated. <laughs> um, another thing uh, my mom doesn't understand, she doesn't understand when anything's wrong with me. So she'll just have to uh, ask me to tell her what's wrong. God, that's, you can't see that at all, can you? Um, if you could see it, you'd see there's a drag and drop interface that provides a, <laughs> um, some re response. Uh, pretty much you drag items from here onto this side and um, you know it's there because you can see the items move from one side to the other. So that type of interface is, is okay. Drag and drop. But I'll get to that in a little bit. So, other lessons from my mom. Uh, cool is not usable. Just because everyone else has a flash intro on their web page doesn't mean that you need to. Because it's for one, it's horrible for SEO. Um, and they're horrible to make, but uh, definitely go with usable over cool, and cool will come after. Uh, I always used to tell my mom, I need this because everyone likes it. And she'd tell me, you aren't everyone. <laughs> so, um, you know, the, it goes the same thing. Cool, cool is not usable. And sometimes it just isn't worth it. Uh, at work, sometimes I'll get like this crazy feature from a client, and I'll be like, this takes 20 hours, and all it does is just link you to a different page. <laughs> so, you know, be realistic with your. Um, with your expectations of your design, and try not to go, go too crazy. So, and a note for my grandmother, uh, take those photos off your Facebook, people can use that to get to my bank account. <laughs> 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 so, um, for those of you who are familiar with Drupal, you've probably seen the help text box every time you create a new field, and you've probably ignored it. Um, but it's useful to let users know what you're doing with their data and what kind of ways um, you'll be manipulating it. And that, if you let them know, if you take the five seconds to enter some help text, um, users will give you the best possible data. So now is where it gets a little bit sciencey. I was told not to make it too sciencey. Um, so this is a test. Uh, you've got less than 250 milliseconds to find the red circle. Ready? Okay, so it was easy because you found it. Uh, it's not hard to find a red dot in a sea of blue. But next round, ready? Get it? So you found it because it's a circle, not a square. So you identified it by uh, the difference in form. And next round, go. You got it? Did it take a little longer? No, maybe. Um, 
I might have put it in the same place. <laughs> but studies show that uh, it's difficult, it's a little bit harder to find, um, uh, to do that last task pre-attentively. Um, most tasks that happen pre-attentively happen in less than 250 milliseconds. So that's when you, you're on a web page and you see something automatically and you know what it does and um, that's all good. But when you clutter it like this, you know, when, you, when your web page is like this, it takes users a little bit longer. Um, so that's important because it shows that you really have all the control and you have all the power. Um, if you want to be like Sony and you want to hide your text on the bottom so users don't read your non-warranty included, uh, <laughs> then you can do that. Or you can, you know, highlight your, your sales or something and show that those headphones only cost $200. <laughs> so the Gestalt laws. Um, these are laws that define uh, human perception. Uh, They'll, they'll seem very obvious to, obvious to you, but there'll be things that you didn't know how to name, but now you can put a name to it. So, uh, proximity, similarity, closure, continuity, symmetry, and the common fate. Uh, proximity. So over here on the left, you see that these two uh, sort of images look like groups, and that's because your brain naturally groups them like that. And um, in this example of proximity, uh, your brain doesn't group these, the unlock sign with this lever. It's actually to get out the airport bathroom. <laughs> um, because this the sign is in, clo in close enough proximity to this to make the connection. And another thing is that the icon, the icon is completely different from what you would expect. Uh, and this is another bad example. This is a login form for the National Science Foundation. So if you're a normal user, you typically put your last name, your social security, and your PIN number here, and click login. But if you're an administrator, you think you'd enter your uh, proposal ID and proposal PIN um, and click login, but you actually have to enter this too. So. If you click login, you'll just get an error box if you don't fill out these. Um, and, you know, something that might be better is the intermediate page between that, or two buttons, or, you know, anything but this. But the proximity of the login button to this side of the page is uh, it's confusing. It's obviously confusing. Similarity, this is from the DrupalCamp page. Um, Objects of the same color and shape are seen as blind together. So here we have an example of proximity and similarity. Uh, these can be viewed as one group, and these can be viewed as one group, just because shape and color. Closure. Um, let's go to the tiger. So your brain automatically fills out the tiger. You know that the tiger exists in its entirety, but even though there's a white, a huge chunk missing out of it. Your brain completes it just the, the same way it completes this oval. This isn't an oval, it's a, this is a line. But you see it as an oval. Uh, continuity. Lines that tend to be seen, lines uh, tend to be seen as continuous even if they're interrupted. So I think most of you probably saw this line as being continuous across the top of the Drupal Camp website. You see this as being continuous. Um, probably because of the inset border. Uh, this is from the Apple uh, power settings. And you see a triangle here, even though a triangle doesn't exist. Um, just human perception. Uh, this one's a little bit harder to explain. Uh, symmetry. Uh, if you have two symmetrical figures and they're bounded by a, a single border, or a symmetrical border, uh, you see them as one image. It goes. With it pretty much follows uh, continuity, but um, most people see this shape right here to be one image, even though it's not, and they see this to be two because they're not symmetrical. And same with the tiger. Uh, you could just fill that in with your head. And common fate, um, it's, this is the hardest to explain in the slide. And it's, my example was when you're dragging your icons across the desktop, 
that they move together, so you realize that they share the same fate, that they'll end up all end up in, end up in the trash or something. And more design, more science. So, uh, minimum 60% white space on your page at all times. Uh, this is a new student enrollment form. And they have 60% 60, 60 white space, it just still looks bad. Uh, so, that's the same form, but spaced out correctly. So you want to make sure the top and bottom are proportionate. Um, and text. Uh, follow Twitter's rule and stick to less characters. Uh, a 40 character line um, is shown to be preferred by, read or by users, even though uh, users read faster when the, when the text spans across the whole page. Uh, but they prefer to read columns like in the newspaper. It just looks better to the eye. Uh, 1.5 space re helps you read 40% uh, faster than a single space. So if you want to read very quickly, uh, you'll notice I have 1.5 spaces. <laughs> uh, justified text has no advantage over left line text. So whatever looks best for you. And the center text is difficult to read. Um, I try to make it center. <laughs> uh, fonts, uh, camel case, upper lowercase fonts. Uh, it only makes 12% difference, so um, go all uppercase if you need to. Uh, serif fonts, uh, if you don't know what a serif is, it's a little embellishment on the end of a font, or end of a char uh, character. And sans serif is without embellishment, so this font is sans serif. Uh, not e as easily readable as Sarah, but that's not my. I didn't make these slides. <laughs> well, I didn't design the slides, I made them. Um, proportional fonts are more easily readable, that's a typo, than fixed width fonts. Uh, so, proportional fonts, the widths change uh, depending on the character. So, an I would be very thin, it would take a thin amount of space. And, in a fixed width font, it would take up the same amount of space each time, uh, and proportional fonts are better. Um, do not use more than one to three fonts, uh, three, one to three different font types, font bases, and one to three different font sizes. Um, I built the University Club's website as a project uh, in winter quarter. I don't know if you've ever been to the University Club on campus. It's good food. Um, but they just went font crazy. And uh, they get a lot of compliments, but not on their font. <laughs> uh, color guidelines. Use color redundantly and, some, and sometimes sparingly. And do not use blue for small objects. I know that you'll often see blue question marks uh, as a tooltip or a help text. It's hard to see. Um, Human eyes have the greatest sensitivity for red. There's about 62% uh, of receptors. 60% of receptors in your eye are red, and only 2% are blue. Um, so, blue is a good background color because uh, it's easier to ignore in the periphery. Uh, black, white, yellow, and blue can be used in the periphery because they all have the same sensitivity. And you'll notice that the, our designer listen to my slides, but we only use black, white, yellow, and blue. Um, more guidelines. Do not use more, more than four to seven colors per screen. Uh, after that, it gets too busy. And a side note on color is that color coding is good. Um, as long as you stay consistent. Um, I mean, you should always have your errors being red. Uh, Actions being green, something like that. And to draw attention to an object, you have to use not only brightness, but brightness and saturation. So here are four different examples. This is green on green text. This is a uh, green text adjusted uh, through lightness, not brightness. And this is green text adjusted through saturation. And this is green with light, lightness and uh, brightness and saturation, sorry. So I don't know how it looks through the projector, but it pops on my screen. And 
closing thoughts. I'm running on time. There's so much more out there. I mean, I wanted to do a lot more slides, and you have to believe me when I say I deleted you know, a large amount because uh, I was told that numbers, uh, numbers on the page don't work well with you guys. Uh, so, but, you know, there's tons of design elements out there, tons of good websites you can look at. Um, so don't be afraid to just Google the top 10 websites and see what it comes up. Um, remember your mother. Remember the lessons I've communicated to you today. I'll be your mother. Um, but don't be afraid to leave the nest. Like I said, just follow the guidelines and try new things out. Uh, and own it because I didn't have a last bullet. <laughs> uh, so thank you. Questions? Yes? Uh, do you have any resources uh, links to the Google Scholar or anything? Yeah, like but the thing is, when I was putting them in, they kind of just... <laughs> um, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I had it in a word doc, and I just, um, but if you talk to me after, yeah, definitely. Are you going to post the, uh, the slides? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. My advisor, uh, for, no, I'm graduating in March. I do not, I'm an undergrad. Yes. Two more quarters. Any other questions? Yes? My favorite website, well, we have a very good, KOL has a very good designer, his name's Destin, and um, his website's Noble Design, Noble Design, he's based out of Dallas, and um, I think he's great, he, he learned from the designer at Firehose, who's KC something, um, yes? You know, one of the things that's kind of missing in the web world in a greater extent versus uh, print media like magazines. Magazines typically will have an art director and a designer separately as two separate job functions. And I think often in the web, we don't see art directors exist at all, mm -hmm. which is a big part of the problem. Can you, if you can, can you? Give us a description of what you think the difference between those two are as it affects between design. Art directors and, and designers. Well, the thing is, um, graphic design is not UI design. They're two different things. Um, so when you, know, when you have an art director, I guess his main, main purpose would be to make it look good. And when you have a designer, is to make it look functional. So... Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty tough in the web because uh, I'm hardly a designer and I have to, you know, design. So, um, I know it's looking for a job. <laughs> uh, any more questions? We want to see some numbers. Some numbers? I deleted the, well, I, <laughs> uh, I deleted the slides, I'm sorry. Maybe Phoenix, Drupal Camp Phoenix. Yes? Uh, how are your, your designs typically delivered to uh, developers? To developers? Uh, they come in a layered PNG format. I know, the reason I ask is um, you know, the traditional method is just here, you know, here's a design, here's a page, but with the move to more responsive themes and kind of dynamic mm -hmm. uh, content, it seems like that process needs to change, but I haven't seen any good uh, approaches to that. So there are a couple of things. Um, we typically tell our designers to design on a grid so that we can make it responsive um, for mobile. If you know the, the screen collapses, everything sits nicely. Um, the second part is that you need to design for everything. Design for tablets, design for desktop and design for mobile, I mean, you can't, in the end, you can't really share the same design, so um, we typically, if they, if they can afford it, then we design for all three. <laughs> um, 
Yes. Do you see any effects of like uh, high resolution displays on the way people interpret? Um, effect of high resolution resolution displays. Um, well, definitely things look a lot smaller, and they're harder on my eyes when I, when I'm I'm working late hours, but. No, it's just when you're designing for higher resolution screens, you have to realize that uh, people's monitors do expand to that, and sometimes you'll miss something and it'll be all black, you know, to the, to the edges or something. You'll so you have to compensate. Um, and I do recommend developing on a higher resolution screen or designing on that. Definitely, I, yeah, I, we don't use that at all. Yes. Um, mobile design. You know, I don't. Huh? Yeah, well, definitely keep it simple. Um, I've done a couple mobile sites, and uh, what people like to do with mobile sites is they like to take the whole website and crunch it down and make it scroll forever on a phone. Um, but what I like to do is like, I like to hide things. You know, if, if you're on a phone, you need, you're, you're trying to get to something quick. You're trying to navigate to uh, something. So there's a there's a law called Fitts Law, which uh, pretty much is the less number of clicks needed to get to accomplish a task, the better. Um, there's actually a competition that goes around where we at UCI where. Um, we're given a task and we're given an interface, and we have to organize the interface in a way that um, the mouse moves, travels the least distance and it takes the least number of clicks to get to some page. Um, but definitely look into Fitz Law. F I T T. Yeah. Is there anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.